Good afternoon. Sit down. So, we have physics, unit 8. What is the previous lesson? What you have covered? The lesson that you have covered. How is it called? Okay. Janti. The previous lesson was about Kepler's laws. Is it about Kepler's law? Thank you very much. We have Kepler's laws. How many do we have? Adeline? Thank you. We have three Kepler's laws. Thank you very much. Then, uh, who can now tell us or state those Kepler's law? We have three. Adeline? Thank you. The first law is about ellipse. And the second law is called is about area, and the third law is about time. Then, uh, after that review, we are given a video there. You have to see. Then you think about what you are seeing. After the observation of the video, we have the question or questions that you have to answer. Bawazi? Uh, thank you. For me, I have seen the movement. Movement? Thank you. For me, I saw the planets. You have seen planets. Then uh, another one. Yes, Janti. Thank you. For me, I've seen the, the sun in the center. The sun in the center. You have movement, planets, then sun in the center. But we have you applied these concepts. Yes? We applied these concepts in geography. These concepts are applied in the geography. In the geography, you have movement, you have planets, even the sun. Thank you. Then, let's answer the second question. Someone told it. Bawazi? Related the concept given to physics. Thank you very much. Relate the concepts given to physics. Because you have answered that the concepts, you saw them in the geography. But you can relate those concepts to what? To physics. Thank you. Then, who can relate them? For example, the first one. Can't we relate it to the physics? Yes? Thank you. We can relate movement to physics as it is in motion. Thank you very much. Then, movement can be related to motion. Someone to write. Thank you. Then, movement is related to motion. Maybe we have a discussion in that group. We have the activity, and the activity will be conducted in that group of a two, pair group. The activity is to define the motion, to define orbit, Define centripetal force. And the second is what is Kepler's third law of planetary motion? So let's take about five minutes of the discussion in your respective groups. Light, there, then you have calculated there to see that is true, then this is true. You have a K plus, it is correct, even this is correct. For the second one, to tell me how you, you have applied that one. Okay. 
Okay, that's true. Mm -hmm. That is true. Finally, the last one. It is asking to give the Kepra sad collection. Collection, please. So let's take your group to collect the first question. About the work that we had, we found that motion is the change of position from one place to another, and orbit is a circular or elliptical orbit, a path of an object around another object. And the centripetal force is a force that keeps planets move in a circular motion with the sun. And the Kepler's third law, or number two, we found that it states that the square of periodicity of revolution of any planet is proportional to the cube of their mean distance arrow from the sun. Thank you very much. Then we continue. We have a title which is given there. Someone to read. Yes, class representative. Thank you. The title is Verification of Kepler's Third Law of Planetary Motion. Thank you very much. We have an instructional objective which is given is that by using a pen and exercise notebook, you, learner, you should be able to state, apply, solve problems involving Kepler, the law of planetary motion collectory. We assume that planets orbit is circular. What do we use to assume? What do we have to assume? Yes? We assume that planets are circular because they are assumed to be spherical. Thank you very much. Then, someone to show us or to draw a circle. Okay? Who can show us the center of that circle? Center of the circle. I'm going to first draw a line from here up to here. Mm -hmm. So where they will meet will be the center. Where they meet will be the center. Thank you very much. That is one way. Thank you. Can't we get another way? Uh-huh. Then you can see where they meet at the center by approximation. Here is where the center can be located. Thank you very much. That is another way of a determination of a what? The center. Thank you. Then, after drawing the center, who can put the sun here? I'm not the sun is here. Thank you very much. That is what? The sun. Now, we are given, we have the, the sun in the center, but we have also a planet with, which is moving around. Around on the orbit that you have there. Who can show us and they put even that planet there? First you show the orbit, then you draw what? A planet. And the planet can assume that it's here and revolving around the sun. What, what are you drawing there? Can't you give the name? It's a planet. Thank you. Planets. Thank you very much. Then another one to put now their masses because we are given a mass of sun and what else? Mass of planets. Are there in? We will have mass one and the planet will have mass two. Mass two. Thank you very much. Then, uh, who can now relate or join? You draw a line which will join the sun 
and the planet. The line will be from here to here. Thank you very much. Then, uh, that is what we are calling the mean distance, isn't it? Yes. How can we denote it? We write it as a line only, class monitor. The, main, the, the main distance from mean the sun distance. to the planet. Okay. Then, uh, we are seeing that there we have uh, two bodies. What are they? Thank you. Then, stand up. That is good. All the time. All the time. That is good. That is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. That is good. Thank you. Then, after that, maybe we can have a what? We can have a two forces from what? From the sun and the the planets, planets which is revolving around the what? The sun. You can have two forces. What are they? Two forces that can arise. The two forces are gravitational force of attraction and centripetal force. Gravitational force and the centripetal force. Someone to give the formula that we can use to calculate what? Grass. G is equal to. G M mass one mass two over R squared. R square. Then someone to explain now the symbols used. Maybe we have F, we have G, M one, M two, R. What are they? You seem. M, M1 is mass of the first body and R it is the radius. R is the radius. Others, do you agree with uh, what is given there? No change. In the second body, for us we call it planet, isn't it? Then here we have a R, this is radius. Then this is the mean distance. Mean distance, okay? Then after we have a, the force. You have also two. To precise what F stands for. F stands for what? F stands for what? Yes. Thank you. F stands for gravitation force of attraction. Thank you very much. Then F gravitational force. Then, we have here, because we have a circle, there, remember, we can negate how many forces? One of them is this one, which is the gravitational force, the second one. How do you call it? The second force. Thank you. The second force is called centripetal force. Who can give the formula of calculating centripetal force? Centripetal force, Deborah. It's equal to mass times the square of velocity <coughs> of a radius. Thank you. That is the formula that you have to use to calculate what? Centripetal force. Now, someone now to give the names of those samples. Their meaning. Yvette? This is centripetal force. This is the radius. 
and this is the velocity and this is the mass of the sun. So you give her flowers. We have the two forces which are there, isn't it? Which are gravitational force and centripetal force. And then we know those forces. Can you get a relationship? What relationship will we have? There? The relationship they have is that gravitational force of attraction is called to centripetal force. Can you light it? The gravitational force. Which is FC. FC. We don't have a mistake here. Remember for us we have used the word F F2. Instead of being what? FC. Isn't it? This is centripetal force. It depends to the the notation, isn't it? Simply, it means here F1 is equal to F, F2. Then, if F1 is equal to F2, what can, can you conclude now? Or you can even replace, isn't it? Who can do? Who can replace? Okay? Class representative. Then that it is equal to G mass 1 mass 2 V squared over R. Thank you very much. You are seeing that this is F1. There so you have F2. Why here we are using 1? What it is, does this M1 mean? M1 is the mass of the sun. Janti, what is M2? Thank you. M2 is a mass of a planet. Mass of a planet. Then here, we have also M2. What does this M2 mean? On the other side, you are seeing. Okay? Thank you. M2 means the mass of the planet. Mass of a planet. Thank you very much. Then, is there a question? Okay. There were, she was going to write the formula for centripetal force. For the notification M, she wrote that it's mass of the sun, while we know that it's mass of the planet. We have to collect this point, isn't it? This could not be mass of the sun. This could be what? Mass of the planet. Thank you very much. Is there any other question? Any other question? Okay. Then, in your groups, you are going to, to search for this velocity, velocity square. You are going to take group of four according to your performance. You have to discuss about what? About... The calculation of the what? Of velocity squared, isn't it? Yes. Then after, we search for radius or period. How can you get a period from that, isn't it? You have to use around five minutes. Search for the square root, isn't it? Then after, you will relate linear motion with a circular motion. You have R. Even there you will correct now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you have R square. Then you can search for or the relationship between what? R and T. The mean distance and the period. Isn't it? Good work. Then let's call one group to, to show us how we, we can calculate or we can deduce the, that relationship between mean distance and the period.
A, B, C. Back to your respective places, please. We have that F1 is equal to F2, which means G, M1, M2 over R squared is equal to M2, V squared over R. So we remove some elements like this and we stay with M, G, M1 over R is equal to V squared. We are relating this to, to the linear velocity which is equal to V, which is equal to RW. The angular velocity, we know that it's equal to 2 pi over period. As we go, we get that t squared will stay directly proportional to r cubed. And t is a period and r is the mean distance. Thank you very much. Let's give her three lengths. Which is the square of period is equal to root mean square power power three, isn't it? Thank you very much. This is true. Then, who can remind me the third law of a Kepler? Someone to remind. Yes. Kepler's third law of motion states that the square of period t of revolution of any planet is proportional to the cube of mean distance apart from the sun. Is there a question? Mm -hmm. If you have a question now, is it there? Time for questions. Thank you. We've been focusing on the third law of planetary motion, but what is the application of the third law of Kepler's uh, in, of the planetary motion in real life. Others, we have to answer the question. We have third law of planetary motion. What is its application in our real life? How can you answer that? Your time, please. How can we answer that question? Thank you. I think this third law uh, of Kepler's laws can be applied by the astronauts when they are moving in the space so that they can collide with other planets. Thank you very much. Give her flowers. flowers. Then thank you for asking questions. We have uh, a homework. You try it. You try it, maybe it will be collected. Then uh, let's take uh, this opportunity of uh, telling you thank you. This is the end of our lesson. We continue next time. During the, this process of learning and teaching the lesson, I've used learner center the method where we have uh, different techniques that you have applied for example you have seen that we use most of the time groups where runners try to explain each other and even uh, try to give the, what they know about the concept which we provided then also they have applied presentation and even there in the presentation, they have to, to get a critical thinking and even a problem solving. Uh, I mean, this uh, methodology is, is very interesting and wonderful because it helps learners to understand clearly all what they study and even to create on themselves. And they also give a what do they know about the cost?